that brings me neatly on to reason number three. You never heard of me? I try to squeeze too many ideas into one small space, slash, I suck on TV. <laughs> See? I even ran out of room there! Right? <laughs> now, Natasha, before I show you this next footage, please try and remember, only a couple of minutes ago, you kind of liked me. <laughs> okay, because I'll be honest with you, I'm not very comfortable with this. I'm not proud of this at all. This is footage I'm about to show you from, uh, the, it was during the Ricky Gervais Mongate scandal, right? Yeah, and those who are not familiar, Ricky Gervais, right, went on his Twitter feed one day and made what he called, quote, unquote, mong faces for a day, going, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. When I first heard about it, I dismissed it like most of you, it was just a bit stupid. Then, when it was front page news for like a month, and everyone was behaving like it was the worst thing happening in the world, I then started to go, now this is kind of funny to me. Because here's what happens in my career, Natasha, right? Once every five years, a comedian will do something stupid and offensive, and some tabloid media television will come to me and go, hey, you're stupid and offensive. <laughs> come on and say something stupid and offensive. <laughs> Which is kind of stupid and a little offensive. <laughs> and then they say, come on and say whatever you want. And I go on, I say whatever I want, and then I'm not allowed on telly for another five years. <laughs> now to set the scene, ladies and gentlemen, as well, uh, if there's any foreigners in the room, uh, I was appearing on a show called Daybreak ITV. You hear the giggling in the room? It is the most vanilla milk toast, tea and biscuits television you could ever appear on. It's an environment where I have no concept of where the line is, right? It's not out of like, yeah, or anything. I just don't get it. I don't fit, right? And uh, the segment before me, there was a woman, right, who was acting as a spokesperson for a brand new technology. She'd been paralyzed in a skiing accident. And she was representing this brand new technology, allowing her to walk unaided for the first time. So bear in mind, this is the segment just before me. And this lady is adorable, ladies and gentlemen. I should fall vertebrae. Turn up with. And an electric current went through my legs like a zzz. Keep your eyes and on her hands. Me and there was nothing. I was left with no sensation or movement below my pelvis. She points at her vagina. No. And no. he stifles a laugh. Right? <laughs> She's effectively insinuated numb cunt, right? And, uh, and he's holding it up because he knows he's not supposed to. That's why he has to hold one in. That's actually his decency at work, right? And this woman, I can't stress just how adorable this lady is. Oh, it's a real pleasure to you. Can I get a hug? Yeah, yeah. Oh, there's not a dry eye in the house. That clapping you can hear in the background is me. And they may as well have called the next segment, and now here to defend the word spastic, Brendan Burns. <laughs> now you'd think, Natasha, wouldn't you? You'd think that in this environment, I maybe would have considered context. <laughs> <laughs> that maybe whatever selfish point I might have about my silly, pointless art form now is in the time to make it, right? And I was there debating a lady called Sarah from Mencap, lovely lady from a mental health charity. And before we went to wear, right, during the break, that lady presented with a green dress, started checking with the censors, right, which words for disability were and weren't okay. And she just started reeling off all the not okay ones. <laughs> and she was like, which of these are okay? She's going like, mong, mongy, spaz, spaz face, spazzo, spazatron, spazorama, spazonic. Right, and Sarah laughed. Of course she did, because there's nothing funnier than offensive words being listed officiously. <laughs> there isn't. Frankie Boyle is never funnier to me than when I hear his material regurgitated by an offended lawyer. <laughs> I'm just in stitches, you know. Offended people saying an offended sentence is just lacks such self-awareness that always cracks me up. Mr. Burns, is it true, sir, that on May 29th, you yelled cunt in a theatre? <laughs> so Sarah laughed. Of course she did. But the thing is, I haven't got a hearing aid yet. So I turned to her and yelled and swore and went, Fuck you, you laughed! Because I thought I was being affable. <laughs> I did. I thought it came out as, Fuck you, you laughed. But it was, Fuck you, you laughed! And everyone around me just went, what the fuck are we about to let on live television? <laughs> so everyone is really 
on their toes, right? So here we go. You know, there's all, some of it's always offended by some comedy, isn't it? It's a, to everyone's taste. And should it be free to, to laugh? Or should we be free to laugh at all areas of society and find humour in everything? I actually agree with that. I think that comedy should be able to deal with everything, and I don't think that anything should be off limits, which may sound interesting. But I think that comedy needs to deal with issues like disability intelligently. Yeah, no one see what's slightly off about that argument. Because that's including learning difficulties. So you're saying, I think jokes about learning difficulties are okay so long as they're clever. <laughs> <laughs> that's like saying, I think jokes about blind people are alright so long as they're visual. What? <laughs> now, I wish I'd said that, Natasha. I wish I'd said that, because that would have been something resembling amusing. <laughs> Maybe bordering on charm, right? I wish I'd said that. You know what I said? What I said was... <laughs> You want to be able to get away with laughing behind their back? No, I'm separating two issues. What's more, we were talking about the words. Earlier they just listed those words and you laughed. No, I did laugh. You did, yes, you did. Okay. When you listed the what, words off okay. camera. What I'm going to do is actually give you some context. <laughs> Let's give you some context. So if I invited you to meet Neil, a young man that I know, who's had to leave his home because his neighbours and in his neighbourhood he's been called names like this, terms of abuse, in this way, beaten up on his doorstep and had to move to another neighbourhood because of it. That's what's going on in, in society. Now, that baffled look on my face is she just said, let me give you some context and then took it miles out of context. <laughs> However, that's me trying to win an argument in hindsight. And I've already been a prick there, so there's no need to be a cunt here. <laughs> <laughs> But let's face it, ladies and gentlemen, it's not a fair fight, is it? It's not a fair fight because she's nervous because it's live television. I'm not nervous because I'm not that bothered about appearing on television, which is why I'm so very bad at appearing on television. <laughs> but I wish I'd said, Natasha, I wish I'd said something along the lines of, well, I'd probably say to Neil that I'm sorry that Sarah feels the need to exploit your situation just so that she doesn't have to feel sanctimonious. I wish I'd said that. <laughs> not what I said. What I said was... <laughs> Are you funny? Are you funny? Are you funny? Are you funny? No, no, I, I'm almost glad I did that because I made her laugh. Because she's no longer nervous. Because she realises she's debating a red-jacketed fool. 